All right, so our team is More Than Leftovers, uh, and we'll get a little bit started with just introducing ourselves first. Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Anderson, graduated from Western Kentucky University. I did a couple years in software as a service sales and a bit of time in IT help desk. So I've sold software solutions, deployed software solutions, and you know now it's time to write software solutions. So excited to show you all what we've been about. Uh, and I'm James. Uh, I have a bachelor's from the University of Central Florida, where I attended there for mechanical engineering. Um, during my time there, I kind of got to dip my toes into coding at first, a little bit in C++ and Python. Um, and I realized that it was definitely something I was really interested in. Um, and when I transitioned into industry, uh, and the more I learned about tech, the more uh, I was really interested in kind of being able to spend more of my time in that field. Uh, and so, yeah, getting to transition here uh, and work with other coding languages and just really spend the last 12 weeks uh, investing just about all our time into it has been really rewarding. Uh, and I'm looking forward to showing you guys what we've been working on. Hello, my name is Chiharu Akiyama. I'm from Japan. I graduated from Portland State University with a degree in computer science. I've programmed in Python and C++, but never in Java and never created a full stack application until now. So may I present our project, More Than Leftovers. So we got the idea for the project by a concern, a shared concern to start making more socially conscious decisions about the food we were buying and preparing. And we're hoping to help solve the problem of food waste uh, through the use of this project. I mean, how many times have you forgotten something that you purchased and it was in the back of the pantry and it ended up going in the trash because you forgot all about it. So that kind of problem we are hoping to solve uh, with our application. Yeah, so during our project, um, we got to work with a lot of the technologies that we've been using over the course of our training. Uh, so we got to use JavaScript, uh, React and Bootstrap to form our front end. Um, we got to have like a way more definitely in-depth uh, application of that than anything we've been working on in the past. So that was really interesting. Um, we were also able to use Java and Spring Boot for our backend, uh, as well as set up, uh, you know, our own REST API using that. Uh, and then for our database management, we use MySQL um, to kind of handle all of that. So I'll let uh, us continue a little bit with our learning goals. So for our learning goals, we decided to deploy our application to AWS. EC2 is what we are running our Spring Boot on. It is running on the Linux server. And RDS is where we have our cloud database management. S3 is the bucket cloud storage where we host a web inter interface. In addition, we used a third-party API called MMOM that required access keys to request recipe data. So here's a brief overview of how we were storing data. Uh, it kind of all starts with the app user. The app user can you know, store pantry items, they can bookmark recipes that they like, leave comments on recipes that they like, and kind of see a, a meal plan come together. And that's a very high level overview of the database. Uh, one of the things that I was most proud of in working in this project, we were uh, very good about understanding what we could accomplish. We had a desirable level of difficulty, not too many late nights, but it wasn't exactly easy either. And so I'm proud of us for that. Yeah, and I think um, kind of going off a little bit of what Brian said, but I, yeah, I think uh, just the amount that we were able to accomplish in such a short time span, I mean, only having about five or six days uh, of development time um, and to get a finished product that uh, we're happy with how it looks and all of our features that we were focused on, um, got finished, I think it took a lot of prioritizing and a lot of problem solving, a lot of handling problems that we couldn't have predicted during the planning. And I think just uh, seeing how we tackled those as they came up was definitely a pride point for me. Yes, I think we communicated well on problems as a team and problem solved effectively. Sometimes even the act of screen sharing would solve a problem. All right, uh, then we will take you through a little bit of a demo of our project. All right, James. Uh, so 
I'm trying to get back into my New Year's resolutions. You know, I fell off for a little bit there, but I'm trying to get back into meal planning. Uh, so could you show me how to use your application? Yeah, definitely. So um, when you first kind of come to the screen, we have our landing page here. Uh, if you are not yet signed in, uh, you can definitely sign in up top where we have like a little bit of an option down here as well um, with some information. But if we want to get you signed up, we can over here. And I can get you in as Brian the second for now. I am um, a junior, so that works out. Perfect. Uh, and I will put in a password for you. Um, oh, and it looks like we need a little bit of a better password. So I'll add another character on there, see if that works for us. Perfect. And it looks like we've got you an account going now. Okay, could sign me in and show me what it's about. Yeah, so you'll notice um, up top on that now, but we have a few options at the moment, but uh, once we get you signed in, uh, we definitely have a little bit more available. What is there anything specific you want to get looking into? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get back into running. That's another one of my New Year's resolutions. So I'm thinking about carbo loading a little bit. Can you can you show me what pasta options we have? Yeah, so we can take you over to our recipe search over here, um, and maybe take a look at some of our pasta options. Yeah, so if we want to take a look, maybe at this first one here. Um, We've got a pasta recipe. Is there anything specific you're interested in? Oh, um, maybe save that for later. If you could could bookmark that or leave a comment on it to to so that I could go back to it later. Yeah, definitely. I'll uh I'll add a little bookmark and I will mention that maybe you're planning. Oh, looks like I already left a comment on accident. But good thing we can edit it over here. And I'll give it a uh, a four star for now. So we've got our comment on there. All right. Now I don't. I'm not entirely sure if we if we have that on the old meal plan. I'm not really sure how to make a meal plan. Even James, what what do you have for your meal plans? Yeah, I can show you um, my meal plan over here. I've got one built out a little bit that I've been working on for the week. And so if I come over here, I can visit my meal plan up here. You can see I definitely already have a lot of bookmarks in here on my page. Um, and on my meal plan, I have a couple of things laid out for the week. It looks like I'll be eating a lot of pancakes um, predominantly. Uh, but is there anything else that you'd want to maybe get added in here or anything like that? Yeah, maybe. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that pasta recipe out. Uh, maybe if you could show me how to add that. Yeah, so if I wanted to get that added in there, um, if I was scrolling around and I noticed that maybe you uh, you were interested and I know we were planning on cooking something this week, uh, maybe I would want to give it a try as well and get it saved, make sure I can have uh, all the ingredients ready. So I'll add that bookmark in. Uh, um, and I can see it's now uh, popped up my bookmarks down here, which means that I should be able to add it to my meal plan over here. So if it is Friday at the moment, maybe I'll, I'll add it in for dinner tonight, maybe. Um, so I'll add it in for Friday and add the pasta allegrice recipe and get that in there. And now uh, when we're at the grocery store or anything like that, we can take a look uh, at this recipe over here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So since, uh, since it's on the cloud, I guess I could probably pull that up from my phone. Um, how would I check and see if I already had some of those ingredients? Yeah, so since we are a fully deployed website uh, and you can access this uh, online uh, anywhere that you're at, uh, we definitely have some opportunity for that. When you're at home uh, and you're taking a look through your pantry and you're not sure what you have, you can add stuff in there. Um, you know, maybe I have pasta, butter, tomatoes, onions. Maybe I have a little garlic on hand, maybe some Parmesan. Um, and maybe I actually just ran out of butter. Um, but so if I've got kind of my main stuff here, then uh, while I'm out of the store, I can see everything that's in my pantry um, and I can go to my bookmarks or my meal plan really quick to navigate and just double check that I have everything from the recipe. So while I'm at the store, I can remember maybe I need to pick up some guanciale and some pecorino. All right, now I will take role as admin. Um, what if the user, the user makes an inappropriate comment? Now, yeah, so, so maybe, uh, Maybe someone hacks into my account somehow. Maybe I'm using uh, not very secure passwords, reusing them. Uh, and they try and leave a comment to Brian. Uh, and they say something along the lines of, 
something off topic from the recipe. Yeah. So the admin account also acts as moderator for the recipe comments uh, to make sure all comments are related to user experiences with the recipes. Uh, let's go to the user, uh, the admin account now, because we've gotten some complaints about uh, inappropriate comments in the pasta recipe section. Yeah, so if we come over here, uh, we've heard about an inappropriate comment. Uh, in this one, James didn't really remember leaving this comment, and Brian uh, was definitely concerned about it before he clicks on this link. Um, so when, when I come over here as the admin, uh, I have the opportunity to delete anyone's. Uh, Brian's comment looks very on uh, track for what we're looking for on our site, but uh, I definitely think that James's maybe is a little bit suspicious. So just to kind of prevent any users accessing anything they shouldn't be, uh, we can delete that comment uh, and kind of keep track of everything on our website. All right. And what if a user was data conscious and wants to leave? We have a managed account yeah. section for that. Yeah, so maybe Brian has changed his ways. Maybe he's a little bit worried about his password reuse and all that, and he just kind of wants to start over from, from scratch. Uh, and so it comes in, and you can go to manage account. Uh, and if you go in and delete your account, you can come here, and the account will be deleted. Uh, and then if we kind of navigate back, uh, the recipe search feature, even if Brian's account is gone, he can still access his recipes. He just doesn't have a bookmark anymore or anything like that. Um, but he can go back and see that the pasta allegria recipe is there still. Um, but his comments are removed just to make sure that he didn't leave anything behind that he wasn't, uh, wasn't planning on. All right, I think that covers most of the functionality of our website at the moment. I think we can come in and take a look at some of the, oh, there we go, uh, some of the challenges that we had. Okay, some key challenges we had uh, were with our API was that it only allowed 10 requests per minute, um, which we hit quite often. To overcome this, we saved the recipes to our database to minimize API requests. This required us to alter our table structures to allow for more data stored within our database. And in order to rework those tables, we had a conference with our team to confirm additions to tables and refactor the backend to include that information in the models. Uh, now, our current free website doesn't support unlimited API request access, but when upgrading to a higher tier paid subscription, unlimited requests will be available to accommodate more responsive website. Another thing, another challenge with our API was that it didn't do, it didn't say, um, didn't do what we thought it did with images. The images that we saved had expiration dates and were unusable after a certain period of time. So we overcame that by loading temporary stock photos based on cuisine types for every recipe search. Then when viewing the recipe itself, the API would make a call for the proper photo. And that concludes our project. Thank you, Brian, James, and Shiharu for a fantastic presentation. It's like we have some questions from the audience. We'll take the first one. Um, Andrew uh, is asking, what were some challenges that you faced with AWS deployment? Definitely plus one here. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. Um, I would say the first challenge I faced was worrying about doing something that would kick me off the free tier and then getting charged. I, I think one of the big selling points of the cloud is, you know, you don't have to rack and stack uh, servers manually, uh, but you got to be careful with, with what you're using. Uh, and then also learning the lingo. You know, what is EC2 RDS S3 uh, alphabet soup over there at AWS? Uh, so figuring all that out was, was certainly a challenge, but a rewarding one. Excellent. It's so funny. I know that AWS still charges me 80 cents for whatever. I know that I, I did everything I needed to close all my instances and everything. I don't know, but I still own 80 cents. You're totally right. All right, Shaharu. 
Oh, I thought your mic was off. You were going to say something. I'm sorry. Okay, guys. Um, all right. I'm definitely, you know, sort of thoroughly impressed by the quality of your work, uh, the attention to details, uh, the meticulous planning, um, communication skills that you showed and your hard work, you know, definitely uh, a testament to your talent and commitment. Congratulations for, on your outstanding capstone project.